the Northern Games, 30 years of celebration. From the Mackenzie Delta to the far reaches of Nunavut, welcome to the 30th anniversary of the Northern Games, where we come together once again to share our culture, tradition, food, and games. Where old friends meet once more and new ones are discovered. Join us on a journey that spans 30 years and a vast land that stretches from one end of this great country to the other. The Northern Games. A celebration to remember. In the mid-1960s, the North was in transition. People were moving off the land and into communities. Jobs and education were becoming important. There were many opportunities for youth, especially in sports. They became involved in new sports like basketball, baseball, hockey, and skiing. Gymnasiums, hockey rinks, ski trails, and baseball diamonds were popping up all over the north. They were natural athletes and excelled in many sports. However, traditional sports, which were holistic in nature and unorganized and unstructured, were becoming lost in the transition. For a while, they lay dormant in the memories of the people. Noticing this void, two people began to reintroduce the games to the youth. Edward Lenny and Billy Day. Well, first time I saw the games was, uh, oh, when I was a kid. And there was people uh, playing them all the time. Adnapoyak was one place I used to see it. And uh, Aklavik used to, they used to play that one, one time. I saw it played there. And in Tuck, they played more there. Over in Saks Harbor, it used to play, play it all the time. With the help of local elders, Edward began teaching the young men how to play games like the high kick, arm pull, the airplane, usually in his own home. I was lucky I had people like uh, Emmanuel Felix, Alec Gordon, Frank Cockney, Albert Oliver. You know, all the elders used to come around. Yeah, every time they come down there, we were always there. The games were a form of entertainment. Played during the dark period in the winter. Competition was friendly. Rarely were there arguments over who won. No one was idolized to the extent modern athletes are today. Instead, the games were feats of endurance power and patience. They used to go and play it in the Puya, and I believe in the arm pull, possibly Big Jim Angasak Rogers was probably the one that was very seldom if ever beaten. The games developed over centuries. There was little tolerance for anyone who bent the rules to fit his agenda. They were doing the one foot, the two foot high kick. He made his jump and went up. And while he was up there, he knew he's going to get in trouble if he start coming back down forward. So he made a somersault, landed. When he landed, no sooner than he landed, he was uh, he figured he done good. He figured it's going to count. An old guy told him, he said, no, no, he said, don't count that way. He said, that's not the right way to play the game. If you're going to play the game, play it right. He said, when you kick, you come back down the same way you leave the floor. Otherwise, they don't count. That was one aspect of the Inivialuit culture that was being revived. The other was that of drum dancing. Up until that point, Drum dances were relegated to special events like Christmas and Easter. Drummer Kenneth Pililuk expressed concern about the future of Inivialui drumming. He said 10 years from now, 
He said, if somebody phones and wants you to put on a drum dance for them, what are you going to do? He said, we're not going to live forever. I phoned Alec Gordon in a clavic, asked him if he was interested, and he was. I phoned Felix Neuerweg and Tuck, and he and Raddy were interested. That was the beginning of the Mackenzie Delta drummers and dancers. I have some really fond and funny memories of our travels because he's a really elderly group that I had that never traveled before, such as uh, we went for breakfast in Montreal in a large hotel, and I left a $5 tip on the table. When we went back, I uh, getting into the elevator and one of my dancers came up to me and says, here you forgot five dollars on the table. <laughs> Calls a story about Amos Paul from McClavick. Amos Paul could move his head in such ways, and he had uh, he used to use this uh, beak, this uh, uh, loon beak and eagle feathers, and uh, I can remember having a group of people in Calgary when we were or doing a performance outside, and they about five, six hundred people in a big circle. So I told Amos, I asked him to do a dance, and uh, I told him to go around the crowd as he was going and keep, you know, and as he was going around, people were moving back away. They thought he was going to come right out with this great big beak on his head. Because much of the Inuvialuit in the Delta were originally from Alaska, it was natural for them to travel back and forth to perform. So every year we would raise money and, 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 and try to get to Alaska to be in the drum dance competition and also to be built on the uh, work that was being done here by Edward and a group of young men to build the traditional sports. These three people, along with the help from then Anglican minister Doug Dietrich struck up an idea to host an event for their own people in Inuvik. We didn't know what we were doing, but we, we called people together. And uh, there had been some beginnings, because people like Billy Day had, and others had got the Mackenzie Delta drummers and dancers going. This was even before I had arrived. And uh, very shortly before this, Edward Lenny had, begin, had begun working with uh, some of the young fellows and teaching them the games that he had remembered from his youth. And this was already, you know, the seeds were planted. The government of the Northwest Territories was gearing up for its 100th birthday and was planning to host a winter sporting activity to commemorate the North. And we were budding right up to it. So each time we tried to move up to it, it was, why can't you be part of this bigger, uh, bigger program but the bigger program was really more concentrated on um, you know, hockey or, or um, basketball or tennis, you know, ten, uh, badminton. So there was really not a focus on traditional sports or on drum dancing. The newly formed Northern Games Association did not let the red tape discourage them. In fact, their vision became bigger and wider. The games basically were really only um, between a Klavik, Tuck, and then our Inuvik and our relationship with Alaska. And uh, Edward Lenny wanted to to get a more competitive spirit in the whole Northwest Territories at that time. So that's what we, we uh, attempted to do. So we uh, spent most of our time getting a really big arena you know, including Eastern Arctic from Bath and, uh, you know, to Northern Quebec, trying to bring them in. But it took a tremendous amount of 
initiative to raise the money, you know, just for the transportation alone. Doug's primary task was to raise funding. One of my jobs was to uh, assist in fundraising and uh, put in applications for grants and pressure the territorial and federal governments. Uh, at a time when I think the people deserved this, is that the pressures were coming in with the expiration and the potential for the Mackenzie Valley Pipeline and so on. There was a lot of things that were on the horizon, but the people didn't feel they had very much control. The Northern Games Committee found themselves in competition with the Arctic Winter Games for funding and for recognition. So everywhere we went to try to find some resources, uh, everyone had already contributed contribute to Arctic Winter, Winter Games and they thought they were contributing to the promotion of the traditional sports and sporting activities as such because of the name. So our fundraising was really depleting. However, they persevered and little by little the first annual Northern Games were taking shape. It was decided the Games would reflect the lifestyle of the people. I can't remember which particular airline it was at the time, but uh, I know the, the girl who was the hostess was very concerned about the blood getting on the outside of the plane as we were loading these seals and sacks on, on board. It was designed to be a social, cultural exchange, but it was interesting to have this mix, and the people from Alaska as well. Um, and uh, I think that uh, it may not have been the first time that people got together, but certainly on this scale and in this kind of a social, cultural setting. If people wanted to watch or take pictures, but uh, you know, kind of distance themselves and um, not in any kind of uh, exclusive way, but just so that the people could be themselves and do their own thing. And I know uh, when I went to the Northern Games every year, I said, I'm not going to get any sleep. So Dietrich, Nellie Cornier, Edward Lenny, Billy Day, Dick Hill, Kenneth Pilluluk, and Wally King began to plan for this unique celebration. The games were modeled after the lifestyle of the people. Tea boiling, fish cutting, seal skinning, bannock making, and games of feet and strength. So with a limited budget and a vision to see these games come to life, these dedicated volunteers brought people together from across the North to celebrate their unique cultures. The scope of the games was monumental. Nothing like this had ever been done before in the region and the games presented many obstacles to overcome. Particularly when we began to think wider of uh, bringing in people from the central and eastern Arctic. And uh, again, this was a very expensive proposition. Accommodation for 200, food, finding venues, air charters, donations, fundraising, proved to be a huge task. But on July 17, 1970, the first annual Northern Games got underway in Mackenzie Square in Inuvik. Moses Kalenik. Participating communities included Point Barrow, Alaska, Dawson City and Old Crow, Yukon, Arctic Red River, Copper Mine, Fort Good Hope, Fort McPherson, Tuktoyaktuk, Polituk, Saks Harbor, and host community Inuvik in the Northwest Territories. Everyone was happy once again to play their games. The Alaskans wowed the crowd with Nalukutak, or the blanket toss. It was performed during Kalruk, or the whaling celebration, when a bowhead was taken. It was never performed at any other celebration except the one for the successful whalers. And who should win that event but Alice Ikwana from Barrow. And the one-foot high kick seemed to be a sure crowd pleaser. Harry Kaliak of Barrow, Alaska held the record at 7 feet 6 inches coming into the games. 
but Mickey Gordon of Inuvik would beat that record by two inches, much to the delight of the crowd. And the Fort Good Hope drummers and dancers kept the town hopping with their hypnotic drum songs. It was hard to sit down when they started their drum dance. It was truly a celebration. Next is Paul Ben Cassie from Old Crow. He's featured with Tommy Ross. Nellie Cornier explained why it was so important to have the Good Woman contest. There was always a, a medal for the highest high tick or the best Alaska uh, jump or um, uh, knuckle hop. Just a few of us sitting down, and, and I, I don't know who it was, but one of the elderly ladies says, Aren't we as good as the men? And he says, it makes sense. He says, we should be there because we're good women. I said, well, then why don't we have a good woman contest? You know, so then we have a whole array of events. Uh, the tea boiling has a time limit, fire making, the bannock making, the fish cutting, the seal skinning. But it just was an evolutionary thing where people said, well, there's something missing here, so we better put it in. It really hooks to, to tradition because uh, while people are here, food is a very big part of the activity, how, you know, traditional food. So people take part in contests, they finish, and they feed the people. So it's all, everybody gets involved. Bertha Rubin of Politech received the Commissioner's Trophy from Stu Hodson for skinning, cleaning, and stretching a sealskin in a blazing time of 22 minutes. Lena Peterson of Coppermine displayed her colorful outfit from her home in Greenland to win the traditional dress competition. A good life in the Delta helped Emma Dick of Inuvik beat all takers in the Paul muskrat ben skinning Cassie contest. And Tommy Ross Annie Nukon of Old Crow turned out the fastest time in bannock making. But Alexandria Elias of Sax Harbor had the best tasting bannock. Lucy Bluecoat of Arctic Red River had a fire built and tea boiling seconds before her closest competitor. But the overall good woman competition went to Mary Firth of Fort McPherson. She proved her worth in all events and had the most points at the end of the celebration. Stanley Gordon and George Kylick of Inuvik proved to be true Inuks by winning the senior kayak races. And CBC announcer Louis Goose captured the sounds of the fiddling contest. Charlie Linklater on the fiddle. They're from Inuvik. <laughs> Saturday night, all the men slicked back their hair and the women put on their best slippers to see who would take home first place in the jigging contest. When the dust settled, Richard Cuyarana and Lena Peterson of Coppermine were judged the best jiggers in the entire north. And the ever popular talent show was a hit with the crowd. Little Dixie Allen of Inuvik was a favorite, with Rachel Kasuk backing her up on guitar and big sister Dorothy coaxing her on. Charlie Furlong and Louis Goose brought the crowd to their feet with their homegrown country music. And of course, the actual Arctic sports as they are now referred to, were one of the highlights. These were games of strength and agility. You had to be in top shape to make a living off the land and to live through the tough times. 
Edward had no difficulty in finding athletes. William Day, Abel and Glenn Tingmiak, Charlie Kasuk, Tommy Chixi, Roy Ipana, Buck Dick, Jerry Allen, Alan Allen, and Tommy Smith were some of the original Northern Games boys whom Edward taught and then showcased at the first Arctic Winter Games in Yellowknife in 1970. After the congratulations, the award ceremony began. One by one, contestants approached the stage to receive their unique medals. And to wrap up the first annual Northern Games, an old-time dance was held. And in true Northern fashion, it lasted until the wee hours of the morning. So everyone went home feeling happy. They had seen old friends once more and were able to celebrate and enjoy their lifestyles. The Northern Games had been a success. So much so that the group decided to hold another one the following year. So began another year of tedious fundraising, planning and meeting. Everyone in the communities was excited about the next Northern Games. The funding agencies must have thought the games were a success. They came through again with funding for another year. Were the games to become an annual event? So in July of 1971, Inuvik again hosted the Northern Games. Joining communities included Coppermine, Cambridge Bay, and Pelly Bay. Their presence really brought out the feeling of unity. People from across the land, bridging over a thousand miles, came together in the spirit of culture. One moment, a lone drummer from Pelly Bay sang a haunting song, and the next, the entire crowd was doing the tea dance to the drums of the Fort Good Hope Dene. Jane Charlie went on to win one of her many good woman titles. Job and Helen Cusack from Barrow won both a men and women's blanket toss. Buck Storr's team from McLavick won the tug of war. And the woman from Inuvik, led by Mary Allen, beat all takers on the women's side. A new game of harpoon throw was won by Roy Cockney of Tuck, proving his worth as a beluga hunter. Glenn Tingmiak would beat out other athletes in a two-foot high kick, and Buck Dick would even beat the Alaskans at, at their game of Alaskan high kick. The second annual Northern Games were once again a hit across the North. This was to become a pattern for years to come. When the last community boarded their charter's home, and the last tent had been packed away, volunteers knew they were really onto something, and another year of planning went into action. The following year, the games went to Fort Good Hope. The organizers wanted to bring the games to other communities. It's something for the people to get involved in and to have access to, and why not move it around? And uh, this presented its own set of problems, of course, because the smaller communities wouldn't have quite the facilities that uh, Inuvik had in those days. But uh, we bit the bullet, and. Uh, I think at the last minute we had to make some changes, as I recall, in 73, but we ended up in Fort Good Hope. And again, that worked out. Um, it was a, a great event, and it was a, a minimum of <laughs> outsiders, if you will, uh, which gave it a somewhat different flavor, but uh, that was good. Eventually, almost every community in the Western Arctic would have a chance to host the games. The game spawned a whole new understanding of culture in a generation that may very well have lost their contact with it if it had not been for the foresight of the original organizers. Welcome to the 20th anniversary celebrations of the Northern Games in Inuvik. Hello, I'm Yvonne Kisun. We'll explore a bit of our past and open competitions in traditional style Arctic sports. You'll be introduced to events like the high kick, arm pull, two foot high kick and the knuckle hop. The bannock making, tea boiling, seal skinning, goose plucking contests and much more will determine the good woman and good man winners. 
The Northern Games is your chance to meet competitors and renew old friendships with athletes coming from as far away as Alaska, Yukon, Eastern Arctic, and the Inuvialuit and Dene communities of the Western Arctic. I'm pleased to be here. 20 year, 20, it's not really 20 years, it's 22 years, but we did miss two years of Northern Games because we just could not raise the money. But this year, to all the new people, the kids who started, who look just as old as I do, <laughs> but they were here, and they're the ones that we wanted to do something for. And today, I'm sitting in the booth over there, cutting muck up that Edward cooked, and I'm proud of that. And I'm proud that on this stage that many other people have come to take their place. Thank you very much for coming. Have another couple of good days. God bless you all. <laughs> <laughs> one more? Okay, William, say one more. Okay, William. Lead the boys. Now. Okay, now I'll try another one that uh, I used to do with them. This one, you use your feet and you just hang on with your hands and just pull. Good for tug of war, okay? Go! <laughs> Here's another one for you. Every time you get in a party, you know you always start talking. I can do this, I can do that. Well, here's a real good one for you. You don't even have to stand up for this one. This is the time you sit down and do your work. Abel, you want to try it? Right. Tommy and uh, Pat Tingmiak is going to hang on to the hang on to the broom handle. Oh yeah, hang on. <laughs> now, Abel, Abel is out there. Maybe we should go where the people could see you good. Eh? Oh, you're going to go right around? Okay. Now, what he's going to do is uh, Tommy and Patty, when Abel say go, they're going to carry him. But he's not going to hang on to that broom handle. What he's going to do is going to Hold up his fist and put the broom handle and lift him up, lift himself up with his on his fist. Now, what they gotta do is they gotta once you say okay, he's gonna they're gonna lift him up and they're gonna walk away with him. And he's gotta keep his legs folded up together. You just watch him. I'll just shut up and let you do the let able to do the let able do uh, explanation for you. Are you ready? Okay.
Your feet hit the hit the floor. You have to move back. <laughs> didn't I? Didn't I? Uh, just say that you're gonna you're gonna. I leave this with you. That's from the boys. Original boys from 1970. Hi. Okay. Now, I'll, with that, I hope I left you something to take home, and I hope you practice it. And with that, I give you the 1970 Northern Game boys. Abel Tingmeyer, all the boys. These are the boys that started the, was hard enough to stay with me when I, when we, when we started the games, and they're still in there, and I'm very proud. Thanks a lot. The first Northern Games, when we first started, we had a guy by the name of Mickey Gordon. He's gone now. But I'll tell you, Mickey Gordon, he's gone now. But I'll tell you, in front of me, I saw him with my own eyes. He can kick the basketball rim. There's a target for you. There'll be a target for you all the time.
Okay, for Bannock making in the woman, fastest time. Third was Edith Hogak, Sax Harbor, 10 minutes and 53 seconds. Second, June Klingenberg, Holman, 10 minutes, 44 seconds. And first was Kate Inukalik Holman, 6 minutes 42 seconds. And for our men, third place, Colin Adjun Coppermine, 10 minutes 47 seconds. Give him a hand for Zombie Shai. Give William Day a big hand here. Okay, you shouldn't look around like long ago, okay? It's like how we used to do it long ago in a blanket toss. The main purpose of the blanket was to look around for animals. See, like that. Mr. Boyd, give her, uh, give her. Out of play, out of play! He's gonna try again, eh? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the airplane. The judge has said his left arm is bended too much. His left wing. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tommy. Anybody want to target him, just let the tent know. <laughs> Okay, our next contestant is John Stewart of Tuck. He has entered this event just to, uh, to uh, reach the uh, three, three um, event limits so that he can become a full-fledged participant. He's doing this so to show his good sportsmanship. Give John a big hand.
Han Din. Ha? Come on, Din. On Kala Gang's nephew. His leg. Hey, Pan. Leonard, you're supposed to be cheering. <laughs> Come on, it bun. I mean, sorry, didn't I? Man? <laughs> Come on, Din. 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 Blanket toss. I understand there's going to be a demonstration about 8 o'clock, so that should uh, be a very exciting one. So you might want to put a reminder for you on the fridge there, right? Well, we're having a great time out here at the 20th Annual Northern Games, and uh, the high kick is continuing. And look, listen to that. The crowd is fun. This is truly amazing. How high are they now? They're up to six feet four inches. That's uh, two meters, almost two meters. And it's just truly amazing. Look at that. Somebody did it again. Fantastic. Anyway, I have a guest, Kane Tuliganic from Home and Out. Welcome. Thank you very much, Juan. It's nice to be here. I was here 20 years ago as well. So it's nice to be back to watch and bring some old memories back. Great. Now, these are pretty important events, aren't they? These cultural events at the games, the getting together, the music, people visiting each other, and all these wonderful things. All these kind of things are important for, for our people, to their friends and relatives, and they all get together from right across the, uh, uh, the Arctic. You want to comment a little bit on what's happening right now? Well, I just I just got in from uh, uh, Yellowknife today, and uh, uh, the the high kick here is been one one of the uh, important events for the participants and the rat skinning that's going on. So it uh, looks like well organized, a lot of spectators, good weather for it too. So nice to see all friends and some of the guys that I see there still participating from way back, and whether they're officiating or um, uh, judging. So.
how it's done folks, the airplane. from Arabian Airlines Limited. 
Here we got Tyler Kaptana from Tukiaku. Up next we have Brent Wilkie and Craig Grubin. Way to go, Carl. This young fella went to the World Eskimo Indian Olympics in Fairbanks. Go, Matt. Go, Matt. Boy, he's having a hard time to negotiate the corner there. Hurry, <laughs> You got that first aid kit there. Payton. Oh, yeah. 
a younger sister school. Stronger, <laughs> harder, harder. <laughs> Okay, now we're going up to seven feet, six feet, twelve inches. <laughs>
A little bit of grease on your from your pan. I mean, your, yeah, bring it over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a way. Ali, yeah, like yeah. that. Mix it in there, yeah. Are you? Okay. Albert needs one. <laughs> huh? Okay, so Rahabi. Oh, All right, we need Susie, help too to dump this. Brenda Rubin, Sadie Lester, Rita Green, Barbara Archie. No. We need a Fred Khataya in a gym. Go see uh, Kane and the crew inside space. Fred Khataya. Go see them in the gymnasium. I really have problems saying you guys last name. Please excuse me. I'm not trying to make fun of you or anything. Okay. If I say it wrong, you can come and correct me. I, I'm a humble man. Take a shot from anybody. Oh, pardon me. I thought I was at home. Pardon my language, folks. Yeah, okay. Uh, we just got word that we're going to go get some more wood, and maybe tonight, by tonight, we might have a woman's tea boiling. And the uh, chainsaw that we're using to cut the wood was donated to us by West Wind. They also gave us an axe for splitting wood. Yeah. Uh, Edward, can you send somebody over here with some paper cups for some tea? Okay. We're going to give you the tea and the cups, but you guys, guys got to go get your own sugar and cream and whatever you're using it. Okay? We're hospitable, but not that bad. You hungry? We got some food. We got a food booth over there with traditional food, bakchak, caribou soup. Uh, anybody got a pen? We need a pen for sure. Nice looking items for sale and not too bad looking woman selling them. So go check it out folks. Well then just go around and fill them up. And it helps? Yeah. Let me how you make Danny. Yeah. 
K O N I A K. K O N I A K. We got two more seals. From okay, well, Cambridge, Cambridge. Cambridge coming? Or? Yeah, she's coming. She's got okay. dress on. Okay. Sure, you got Two more seals. We need two more. We need two more seals. We need two more seals. Anybody want to tie it up? Two or one? Two more. Two more. Yeah, one I think. So. No. Right here, here. Fred. Who do you see? Yeah, okay. Yeah, go there. Anybody with the key one want to tie the skin seal? Grab your purple. Pull it over. Pull it over a little bit. We need a pressure pack. We need somebody from Kilo. We need a microphone. I think of the Kilo County. What's that? Give it on it. Give it on it. I can't get it. You got it. <laughs> so the, 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 we can't find the elbow, it's frozen. Red Kinman. Mary, you got Ulo? Mary. Sister Mary. You got Ulo? Up here. You got Ulo? Okay. Stand back. You cut the tail off. You have meat on it. Try not to have too much meat on it. Right, Papa. Right from there. Hello from there. Uh, anybody got a big bike for you? He's a frozen little bit. Anybody got a big bike for you? One more seal. We got one more seal. 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 Does everybody have a timer? Yes. Peter. I guess we're going to start. We're going to have one team extra. Okay. Atta. Okay. You want a man? Side stick. When we say one, two, three, go. A man. Cut around the arms, the head, the uh, flippers. Slide across, lean across, and start skinning. As soon as a man finish, a woman starts to flush. When the woman finish, turn your timer. That's when you take the full time for the man skinning and a woman flashing. I'm going to in the park, but I'm going to let you know how to hit home, you know, hit it, hit it, you know. Put up your hands, hammers. Are you ready, Congress? Okay, horses, flush your thoughts. Right there. Doris. Oh, okay. Okay, we're ready to go here. The year 2000, she was skinning contest. One, two, three, go. Here we go. After they're done the seal skinning, we're going to cook them up. And we're going to have a good meal. Here we go, boys. You can't move back, please make room for the uh, uh, We just had a visitor from, from Australia. And if you're from a long way, from any part of the world, you let me know. I'll make you famous, okay? Okay, we got another shower. Yeah, we got another shower. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Check out your shield, your pelts, okay? 
Priscilla's here? I need a timer. Yeah, we need some more timers, folks. Right here, right here. Hey, Corey. Right. Cut, cut another Dennis, piece of Dennis, 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 how many do we get right there? Just press it, just press it. 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 Just press
Oh, and the, the Muscox meat pie that you had today was made by Merkel Luck. In Sealston Park, with the polar bear pants and gimmicks. boys that started 30 years ago and I've been part of it ever since and I'm very proud to be a member of the committee that put these games together for the past few years. And, uh, see the platform there was built by the New York Works Department which I work for. We spent three days on there building it. The fence we got donated to us by NTCL and a whole bunch of other items that are here were donated for the week. Hi, my name is Agnes Kaptana. I'm at the uh, 30th Annual uh, Northern Games here in Inuvik. I'm originally from Holman and I was living here for a year. And I uh, was asked to uh, help coordinate, uh, well, volunteer and coordinate the, uh, the Northern Games during the, um, uh, the week and the weekend here. And I met some of new friends. And that's what Northern Games is about. I'm really happy that I came. I was kind of lonely, but since I met most of my friends, they were the same as me. They lost their husbands, they lost their wives. We all met and we talked and we made one another happy. So I'm going to leave here happy. 
not being too lonely anymore. And I'd like to thank everyone. Another thing, I'm the only Indian kid here. Nobody from a traffic or the grad, and I'm very really proud to come here by myself. And uh, most of all, I'd like to thank all of the participants the people of Inuvik for making this happen. It is a people that uh, I believe uh, is truly what makes an event special. Nunky, Brian Rogers, Lena Allen, Mary Rowland, Dorothy Amos, Marcy Tingnat, and Woody Kasuk. Give them a big hand, folks. These volunteers are really together this weekend. Eight feet, four inches. Silver medal winner. Also, a Tuktoyakto, Stephen Kotoka from Fort Smith, Northern Spice, Mika McDonald. I told Roy, Abel, all the boys at the uh, original Northern Game Boys, it's about time I step down. Because uh, I have to do this. Because you gotta, you got to take it and you got to make it better. I'd like you to introduce Abel Tingmiak. He's one of the original boys. Charlie Cassett. William Day, Angus Alonik, Buck Dick, Jerry Kassoon, Roy Ipan, and Steve Cockney. Northern Games, you are the Lord!